Rogue lines here, and um, instead of waiting for our actual session, I thought I would record how to install AutoHotKey and how to install the default editor so you guys can try and get that up and running before we have our session. Um, it usually goes flawlessly, however, you know, there are little problems here and there, and I'd rather spend our time being more productive in class than trying to work on install issues. So um, I'm going to walk through here how to install it. I actually have the files also, I'll put them on Dropbox, but um, I'm going to show you where you can grab them from the internet. So the first one, you go to um, autohotkey.com slash download, and I have the, the page right here. Um, you're going to see this download autohotkey installer. So that's what you want to click. It's going to ask you to download it. I've already downloaded it and saved it, so I'm going to skip that step. Um, let me bring over the folder where I have it. That is going to download this file here. And then after it's downloaded, you'll double click it to launch it. Mine's going to look just slightly different than what yours is going to look like when it launches because I already have AutoHotKey installed. Uh, but once it comes up here, um, see, so mine says modify repair, but I'm going to say modify. This is much closer to, um, I think what yours or what you want to do is say advanced. I think down here it's going to say advanced. Um, the, the thing is what you want to do is install the Unicode bit. Generally speaking, I would say to install Unicode 32-bit. Um, you can definitely do Unicode 64-bit. However, there are some library functions, which I don't think you guys are going to use anyway, that um, don't use that. Um, what I don't recommend is using the ANSI 32-bit, because then if you have any sort of characters that are not just ASCII text, so they're Unicode text, meaning other, you know, the NEA and other, other languages have symbols that aren't in the ASCII um, uh, codex. No, that's not quite right. But anyway, they wouldn't render properly. And so one of these two, I usually use this one and you just click it. It's going to ask where you want to install. I put mine in a different folder. Yours should probably be under your program files. Just use the defaults um, and hit next. Go ahead and leave the defaults here and go ahead and hit install. And it'll say this shouldn't take too long. Oh, I have other scripts running. Um, so I'm going to hit this reload. So it's going to re actually, you know, I'll just hit cancel, but you hit that and it's going to install it for you. Um, and that's basically it for installing it. There shouldn't be any problem. After it's installed, um, you won't have anything necessarily running. So don't worry about that. We're just installing the actual program files itself into a folder on your computer. Um, and so it doesn't actually launch it. It'll say, do you want to launch it? But don't. It, there's nothing really there. It's, it's really weird. I don't know why they have it do that. But that's step one of installing AutoHotKey. Now, the second one, let me go to my next slide here. Um, there are, uh, you can, AutoHotKey is a plain text programming language. So you could use Notepad and read the text. However, in Notepad, there's no syntax highlighting. There's no assisting or anything. And so um, I highly recommend using some sort of editor or, or IDE. And um, in our example, we're going to use Site for AutoHotKey. But AutoHotKey Studio is written for by a good friend of mine. It's, it's amazing. It just has a lot of advanced stuff that um, I don't think you guys would need. And Notepad++ is also a great editor, which if you're used to it, fine, use that one. Um, in our example, though, we're going to use Site for AutoHotKey. So you can download it from here this is the which is the link there finks dot for you know it's it's in the it's in this file which you'll have here you know what let me let me put that to where we can see it that way it's visible um but also it's in my dropbox file fo folder here so this site for auto hotkey and then that one you'll just double click and it's going to come up with a very similar looking menu we're going to say install it's going to choose basically wherever auto hotkey is installed it'll install in a folder beneath it and so um i would definitely recommend saying set as default i uh file editor i think that should be on by default mine is because i have several other editors and um and that's it just click install i'm not going to install mine because i've already done that um after it installs uh you'll want to go ahead and um yeah, well, it, it, I didn't install it. So um, you don't actually want to do anything with it. Um, however, you'll what we'll do is uh, you can create a file in the folder, which I'll have one here, and right-click it and say Edit. And hopefully your site for AutoHotKey will pop up as the default editor. And see this color coding? So green means it's a comment. Red is that's like a system commands type thing. Um, that's all I wanted to get done in this video. So... Please try to install this, and you can just stop here, um, making sure it's been installed, and then we'll cover live. We'll cover how to create your first script, and and what are the advantages of using AutoHotKey, and and um, 
you know, the simple places to start. It's an amazing programming language. It has all these great functionality, but a lot of the stuff, you know, it's a use it and lose it. So there's some really advanced stuff, but a lot of you wouldn't need that right away. So we're going to start off with basically two things in class. We're going to start with hotkeys and hot strings. And so I'll explain those during our session. But if you want to go ahead and get these two installed, and if you have any issues installing them, please go ahead and, and write me. Um, here's actually an example of a hot string, right? I didn't have to type the whole thing out, but you can email me at joe at the automator.com. And um, we can do a one on one, even like a zoom session to figure out what went wrong. It is only for Windows, right? So it'll work in virtually any version of Windows. Hopefully you're running either Windows Vision, I'm sorry, version seven, eight or 10. Um, it does run in XP and Vista and whatnot. I can't imagine anybody these days is running those. Uh, but um, it's it's not a problem. It just doesn't work. You can actually, if you have a Mac, you can create a virtual environment running Windows and then install it there and it will work and you can do everything from in there. So if you're on a Mac, just create your um, virtual uh, PC and then just go through the same process inside the Windows environment. And uh, let me know if you have problems. Thanks. Have a great day.